Hello, and welcome back to Outmouse Labs. My name is Penny, and I'm glad you're here. This is going to be part two of our Let's Make a Game series, and what we're going to be looking at today is a little bit of coding that we're going to do to make our game a little bit more interesting looking and function in a way that supports the kind of story we're trying to tell. So I have been sort of casting about looking for the sort of story I'd like to tell, and I've landed on wanting to do sort of a point and click adventure style game. And I'm interested in dead malls and abandoned places and ghost hunting and urban exploring. So I thought I would combine all of that into one story. So our story is going to take place at a mall. You'll have three possible characters. And you, the object of the game will be to explore the mall and figure out its secrets and ultimately get out alive. Okay, with that, let's take a look at what we have built and then we'll see about how we built it. go. All right, I'm going to go ahead and go to full screen. So we have a character creation scene here. Just please choose an archetype. You have three different archetypes, and these visuals are um, coming from plugins. Both of these particular visuals come from Gal's plugins, and these are temporary assets. We won't be using these in the long term. So each of our asset, our, uh, each of our archetypes has an explanation of who they are and what their strengths are. So in this case, courage, physical conditioning, and loyalty. Our second option is our urban explorer. They're fast on their feet and lots of and they can jump from window ledge to a fire escape. And ghost hunters are often skeptics, have strong willpower and the courage of their convictions. Now this is again temporary assets to, to prove the idea. And I do recommend that when you're making a game, you focus on getting the mechanics working. You know, so you have your story, you have your setting, then you're going to focus on getting your mechanics working. Uh, and don't worry too much about art at that point. Uh, art you can deal with later, just get a general idea. Size can be important. So try to have temporary assets that are the right size, but they can just be colored squares. All right, so things we've added since the last time we were here. We now have a visual indicator when something is clickable. Now I'm going to show you how we built that. We've also changed the menu around. The menu is now set up better for a single character. This might change some more, but we have our portrait, our stats, our combat stats, and then our non-combat stats, our courage, dexterity, stamina, wits, and willpower. This, of course, is coming from those opening those opening choices for our archetype. Okay, and then obviously we can go in the door, opens the door and takes us to our next scene. So that's it for that for now. Okay, so how did we do that? Well, basically we've added one additional plugin uh, from last time, and it's actually a plugin that I wrote specifically for this. Um, so we're gonna take a look, actually I guess it's two in a way. So the first one is how we get that visual effect of the uh, when you hover over getting it to lighten. So it gives the uh, player something to say, yes, you can click on this. So this code, as it says here, some of this code was based on a snippet I found in RPG Maker Web some time ago, but I can't find the original source. So if you are that person, please let me know. I'd love to credit you properly. I did change the code quite a bit as well. So what we've done um, and for those of you who would like a more in-depth look at coding, I do have a coding primer you can look at. But we've set up our description. Um, so this is a specialized type of JSON documentation that RPG Maker MZ uses to set up the plugin in the editor. So we have a name, we have the target MZ, we have the description, the author, our parameters, which are going to be RGB, stands for red, green, blue, um, a description, a text, that it's, they're all numbers and they all have a default of 64. Down in the actual plugin, again, kind of glossing over, you can watch the primer um, if you need more information. We've created an object, which is sort of a container that holds information called outmouse underscore picture hover. In that object, uh, we've added a variable called plugin name with the name of our plugin. This should match the, the file name. Then we ask the plugin manager of RPG Maker MZ 
to get all the parameters from our plugin. We take each of those parameters and we assign them to a variable in our object. So R is either whatever the user puts in for R or 64, G64, B64, same. Once we have those, we are going to overwrite the on mouse enter function from sprite underscore picture dot prototype. So that's part of RPG Maker's code. Once uh, we are going to alias this, so we've created our version of, of that same function, assigned it to a value, we assign the original function to that, and then we ask that original function to be called so we get all that information and then we add our part and our part is to set a tone using RGB and that's just uh, a set of values that changes the color of the hover. I have it set to 64, 64, 64 so it's kind of an off-white but you can change that to whatever you want in the plugin manager and then it's more convenient than having to come back to code. How long do we want it to take before it finishes getting to full color? Six frames and there's 60 frames per second, so that's one tenth of one second. And then we just add the, we add the tent. When we do on mouse exit, we're doing exactly the same thing. When the mouse cursor leaves the object, or in this case the picture, then it removes the tent by going zero, 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 zero. That simple. And then we have it run both of those functions every frame, um, waiting to see if a mouse hovers. So that's how that one works. The other one that we created for this purpose is what allows our menu to look so different from a base menu. So this has a very small JSON documentation section. Um, just really there's nothing here, just the target MZ plugin description and the name. Once again, we create our object, just like before. We are once again aliasing one of the base functions, window underscore menu status dot prototype dot draw item image. Um, we're calling it. And we're actually going to call it slightly differently. We're going to call it down at the end with the dot call function. And I, that the reason I did it this way this time is because I made changes to the base code, and then I aliased it into my own function. But I actually made I took the base code and copied it into a file and tweaked it to get it right. So going over each change would be a little bit difficult, but I basically. Um, increased the distance between the edge of the page and the picture by multiplying by 3.5. I um, reduced it so that there's only one actor and I changed the width and height of some of the where the picture is put into the into the screen. This other one which is draw item status is where all of the <coughs> combat stats come from. This I've changed very very little. Um, I changed how far from the edge it is and I doubled the line height so that it's down underneath. Otherwise it's exactly the same. Here's the main part I changed. So I made a, com a comment. This is for my non-combat stats. Those aren't in the base en uh, engine or menu. I created a variable called x offset which is from the left side of the screen the rectangle that makes up the menu well, the picture screen of the menu, plus 150 pixels. Then I started drawing text. So we have the title, non-combat stats, where we want it, courage, where we want it. The value of the courage is determined by a variable. Um, so that's going to be game variables dot value one, which means the first variable, you know, is going to be displayed as a number right next to courage. So when you do things in the game that increase courage, you want to make sure it increases variable one. Same exact thing for dexterity in variable two, stamina in variable three, wits in variable four, and willpower in variable five. You will notice that each one is rec.y plus 50 more than the starting. So we started at 300 and we've added 50 each time so that they're evenly spaced. You'll also notice that our um, X offset doesn't change, so they're always lined up. This is an easy way to create new menu aspects. And you just futz with those numbers until it looks the way you want. This plugin isn't really a plugin that you would share per se because it's specific to this game and this design. But I will go ahead and post it in case you want to tweak it or learn more from it. Again, let me kind of go through it slowly just so you can stop the uh, video and look at it if you want. 
it's pretty simple, but it really shows how you can take what RPG Maker MZ already provides and make it your own. Okay, so that is where we are at for now. And story-wise, it's starting to take shape. We're going to have a mall, three characters, and some kind of mystery with a little bit of supernatural elephant. All right, next, um, next video, we're going to be talking about starting to do some storyboarding uh, and taking the script that we made. Um, I, you know, the script is in the dialogue script, not coded script. Uh, and forming that into a story and just building out our maps. And we'll look at that for next time.